Hi, this is Jeff from the Ozark Mountains. That's in Missouri, in the USA. It's time for another shorts episode. This is episode number three. You might remember that in the last Ferengi Fridays, I got this PAL VIC-2 chip and crystal from my friend Sven in Germany, and I sent him an NTSC one, and I've been dying to pop this in a Commodore 64, so I thought we would do that today. This isn't a real complicated operation. Just about anybody can do it if you've got a soldering iron, so let's jump in and get started. I think we'll put the camera up above and get a bird's eye view. Let's go. Here are just a few of the circuit boards I've had made recently by PCBWay, who is nice enough to sponsor this video. So whether you need a few boards or a lot of boards, check out PCBWay. So head on over to PCBWay and get your instant quote on standard circuit boards, flex circuit boards, assembly, and they now also offer rapid prototyping so you can get your mechanical parts made as well. That's an awesome service. So for your next project, head on over to PCB Way. Okay, we've got our 64 here. Now this one works, but it's a little yellow. This is the one I stole the NTSC VIC-2 chip from. So we'll go ahead and pop it apart. I even preemptively wrote PAL on the back of it. There was nothing particularly special about this machine other than I knew that it worked and it was easy to get to. I've already done some work on this in the past. Now let's see. I've done PLA, swapped in a SID, uh, fixed the case, and I need to replace the kernel with a version 3. The version 2 has some, some problems. Oh, and I put new feet on it. I replaced some of the caps, it looks like. It's had its share of love. Not really done much to the case. I mean, it's even still kind of dusty on the inside here. But it works. And the sticky on this copper is kind of giving up the ghost, so I use some cap tan tape. I keep forgetting to order some more uh, adhe uh, conductive adhesive copper tape from Amazon. That would take care of that issue. Pop our circuit board out here. There we go. Oh yeah, put all the replacement mounts in the bottom of this case. Okay. I borrowed a version 3 kernel for this from something. Got a replacement PLA there. And we're going to need to desolder all these tabs. Some people don't realize how easy it is. So it seems kind of difficult. You just need a nice wide tip soldering iron. Like that. I don't know. That's probably like four millimeters or so wide. Okay, I've got my soldering iron here with my nice white tip, which I have tinned, and I have a screwdriver. And I'm just going to heat up this joint. Get right on top of the tab, let that get nice and hot. Slip my screwdriver under the tab. And bend it back. That is all there is to it. And just go around and do that on the rest of the board. Now, the one back here on the modulator is a little more challenging, but that's all there is to it. They don't try to desolder it with the tab down in place. Once you get this whole bottom cover off of here, you can clean the excess solder off with some uh, solder wick or a des any type of uh, desoldering tool that you have. That's all there is to it. It's pretty simple. Now we have that pesky shield off of there. So we can go ahead and try to get our cover off of there, like show. You can see this has no VIC-2 chip in it because I swiped that to send a spin. And here we have our 14.318 MHz NTSC crystal. 
which we need to pull out of there. Now some of these have a strap across the crystal and some don't have a place for that. This one does not have a place for it. Oh, it does have a tab on the top. Trixie. Okay, so we've got our NTSC crystal out. Need PAL crystal. three hands. But if we have three hands, we would make jobs that required four. Okay. Just making sure everything is squared up looking. That looks fine. There we go. See, it's rattling because we don't have that strap on there. But this particular crystal is not made with a strap. But I do have a little piece of copper wire here. And... Put a bend in that guy like that. Poke it down through the hole. Cut a few millimeters off of that end. Okay, now we need to put our VIC-2 chip in. This is a MOS 6569 R3, aka the PAL version. There we go. Got it plugged in there. And you notice this little trimmer here. Uh, that is to slightly adjust the frequency. Now, I don't know how much we'll have to do that. We'll give it a shot. In my experience, these trimmers on these various PC revisions don't change a lot, but we can try it. And we should also have a jumper on here. Here we go. Right there. There is a jumper that says PAL. So we'll need to desolder those two holes. It's a much longer piece of wire than what we need. It's better than it being too short. Darn it. It doesn't want to be in there. It's poking itself back out of the hole. Okay. Now we can just kind of splay that dude out like that. I'll go ahead and solder it in there. And this jumper. Just lets the computer know what speed or lets the fine tunes the clock circuitry, I guess you could say. For PAL operation. So, you need the correct chip, the correct crystal, and to put the PAL jumper in. And that is the biggest part of it. Before putting all this back together, I want to go ahead and try it. Now, the one thing I'm not sure of is how my 
uh, Extron video scaler is going to work with PAL, so we will find out. Let's give that a shot. Well, through the Xtron DVS-304, this is what we get. And it doesn't look too bad on camera, but in person you can see some uh, color banding. And it's got a case of the shakes. I dug out another little monitor I got at the thrift store, which looks a little bit better, but it still doesn't like this PAL uh, S-Video signal very well. Let's have a look at it. Okay, on this small monitor, which I got at Goodwill for $12, uh, I got this because it has component input, S-Video, composite, and VGA all in a nice little monitor with stereo speakers. So it didn't come with remote, but you can do most of the things with the buttons on top. So it looks fairly decent on here. There's still a little color banding right here, which I'm not quite sure about what the reason for that is. But on this monitor, it's nice and crisp, and it's not shaking like it was through the Xtron. So it's something to keep in mind if you want to do an NTSC to PAL conversion or vice versa. You're going to need a multi-seek monitor that can handle it, or you're going to need an upscaler that can handle it. I found that these Xtrons I have will do everything NTSC related super great. They don't work worth a hoot for PAL signals though. Something I want to point out before I put this back together, I added this jumper on the right here, but you actually need to remove the one on the left or you'll short the five volts to ground, which isn't a good thing. Uh, ask me how I know. At any rate, so remove the jumper from here and put it over here on the 250407 board. On the boards that have the one integrated clock chip, there's just one jumper to worry about there. I've had this demo running for about three hours now, and the machine's doing good. Our PAL VIC chip is doing good. This TV here has a little fringing that shows up along the top after all this time once it gets warm. Uh, that doesn't really hurt anything though because it's out along the edge where we're not looking at it anyhow. I thought we might go ahead and run a game and see how we get along with that. Press fire. My old faithful Wiko command control here. Okay, press one. I've never actually played this game before, so I have no idea what to do. Let's see how bad I am. Oh, you shoot. Oh yeah, capture the bad guys in bubbles, I guess. And that's something you grab. Oh, and I think he ate me. Oh, you can bounce that way too. Oh, and you can kill the guy. <laughs> Yeah, as you can tell, I have no idea what I'm doing. Now, one thing I did not do in the C64 when I put it back together is solder that bottom uh, RF shield in place. And the reason for that is... Uh, I want to go back in and try to modify the RF modulator to improve the picture a little bit. These uh, 250407 boards don't have the best picture output. And a year or so ago, Adrian Black did a video where he did some research on how to modify the various RF modulators to improve the S-Video output. You know, you're killing the RF output, basically, uh, but we don't care because we're not using it anyhow. So. And it shows a, kind of a, a cheap and easy conversion. You don't need to pull the modulator and replace the whole thing. You just uh, swap some parts out, remove some parts, and you improve the picture on S-Video. So I think I'll play with that, and then I'll get around to cleaning up this case now that I have a nice dedicated PAL machine. 
So I hope you like this quick video. Doing an NTSC to PAL or PAL to NTSC conversion is pretty easy. You just need the correct VIC chip and the correct crystal. And to change the jumper and that little pot in there, you might need to adjust that until you get the color right on the screen. When I first turned this on, it was in black and white and I had to adjust the pot until I get a nice uh, color signal and everything was okay. That's all there is to it. It's pretty easy. So if you get a chance to swap uh, VIC chips with somebody in Europe and or in the USA, depending on where you're at, and convert to C64, yeah, it's worth doing. It's kind of fun. Not too hard. If you have any questions or comments, well, leave them in the comment section down below. I would love to hear from you. And thanks to everyone who helps support the Hey Bert channel through Patreon and other machines. I really appreciate it. You help keep this channel going. And until next time, bye.